My name is Amna. I co-founded the Auburn Tigers women's team, which is now the Auburn Giants Australian Football Club. In 2010, my cousin played AFL for the Auburn Tigers men's team and he kept telling me, Amna, it is incredible. Uh, being Lebanese, this is Australia's game. I'm having conversations with guys on the field that I would have never crossed paths, paths with from the North Shore and Eastern suburbs and football is the point of connection. He kept encouraging me to start a women's side and after attending one or two games, I went, okay, let's make this happen. There were so many challenges in setting up the women's team. The first was I knew nothing about AFL. <laughs> Neither did any of the girls I had recruited. Uh, and the whole idea was, yeah, let's give women a go. Let's see if, how they go playing footy. Let's create an opportunity for them to play a sport. The problem was we didn't know how to play that sport. And Western Sydney is not the heartland of AFL, soccer and NRL are. So I was competing with other sports. Um, so a combination of lack of experience, lack of knowledge of the game, uh, lack of interest and trying to find a way to generate that interest, lack of funding. There were so many challenges, uh, but the most important one for me was the lack of sport being a priority for girls in their family and communities. Uh, and my father is a classic example of that. He wasn't very encouraging. He was like, oh, what's this sport thing? It's not important, go study, go work. And so you combine all those factors and there were so many challenges we were working through. For me, sport was important because it wasn't prioritised. So for me, it was personal. For me, it was, I really want to play a sport, but I wouldn't know where to go. And there would be so many reasons that my family would say, nah, don't do it. So I thought, how can I create something where it's available, so it's accessible for the girls? And then I kind of start having those conversations around, well, why isn't sport a priority? Why is academia and employment more important? Why don't we value the role sport has to play in developing young people? In 2011, when we first started, it was all very exciting. In 2012, we almost folded. And we almost folded because we started to understand the importance of funding and resources that we didn't have. I mean, we had no money. We couldn't even afford a bag of footballs. Uh, the footballs we got were donated to us or like given as a sponsorship uh, from the AFL. So for us, it was like, okay, we really need to get ourselves organized. And if we're serious about this being a sustainable initiative and being here for the long term, we need to start thinking and strategizing and, and implementing some, you know, I don't know, best practice of how to run football clubs. So the first thing we did in 2013 was we registered as a standalone club. We attracted two sponsors and we committed them into three year contracts. And had it not been for Crescent Wealth and How I Charcoal Chicken making that commitment for three years, we actually wouldn't be here today. In 2014, I sat down with Nick Johnston, who was an employee of GWS Giants, and had a chat with him about, well, what would the partnership look like? What is it that benefits the, the Giants? Uh, and what is it that benefits this women's team? Why are you interested? And for them, it was simple. It was, you're about community. The Giants are about community. And we'll provide you with extra support and ensure that you, be, you, you remain viable. And so that agreement made sense to me. And it was scary. We'd done so much fantastic work, like the Faith Fashion Fusion exhibition, countless articles, videos, and I was scared. It, what if we change and people forget who the Tigers were? I didn't want to lose our roots. The way we kept our, our origin was to keep the claw marks in our G. And that's sort of our way of paying respect to the fact that we were born Tigers and now we're Giants. I've done so many things as a result of being involved in the women's team and growing the club. Uh, the most significant thing that's recently occurred is I met Katie Page, the CEO of Harvey Norman, and never in my wildest dreams did I expect what would occur to occur, but her support has been phenomenal because what it's allowed me to do is grow the under 14s and the under 18s youth girls team. And as a result of our involvement and presence in the youth space, but also in supporting and encouraging female participation in sport. I've been invited to countless forums uh, to run workshops and facilitate um, youth events, conferences, whatever it may be. 
all over the world and also domestically. Uh, but the most significant one, I think, the one that completely blew my mind was TED Talk. To do a TED Talk was my dream. And when I got invited to TEDx Youth at Sydney, I was just like, is this happening to me? Because <laughs> it, was, it was in the five-year plan, you know? It was like, keep doing extraordinary things and one day you'll be up there. And to do a TED Talk at Sydney Opera House was just phenomenal. Truly like, oh, there are no words. To meet someone like Katie Page, who has been a mentor to me, but also such a strong supporter of female footy and female in all levels of sport and all types of sports, but her contribution to the club and strengthening that presence that we have has been phenomenal. And I mean, I, I had I'd heard of her and her work around supporting women in all types of sports. It just so happened that six months after I'd heard her name and you know the club was evolving and things were happening, that I saw her at an event and I just believed that that was fate. That wasn't anything I could have planned. Um, some of the other things that have occurred as a result of the footy team include our engagement with schoolgirls. And that for me is a, a very personal connection. It's personal because I remember when I was in school, I hated it. I was so disengaged. I drove my teachers mental. And to be in a position where I can relate to these girls and say, hey, I understand, you know, I thought it was shit too. And bring them in and give them hope and motivate them and make them excited and give them structure. And you know, sometimes you've got to be tough with them and say, really, you're being a diva, get over it, start running. And then sometimes go, it's okay, and let them cry on your shoulder and be supportive. But more than anything, to watch them have those moments of success on and off the field and see that the excitement in their eye, that's truly rewarding. So the, the personal journey for me has been phenomenal and it was one that I could have never have imagined when I started the whole team and initiative. Being one of the only standalone women's football clubs in New South Wales uh, has been a very interesting experience. It puts us in a unique position of not having too many men around, you know, inserting their way of running football clubs and what they think is best for women's football. But one of the most important things I think for the girls, for the club and for the local community is how do we bring men in, in a respectful way so that it's still a safe, female environment, but how do we bring men in, for example, how do we bring in husbands, fathers, brothers who support women? Because I think the conversation we have in Australia around uh, hyper-masculinity or uh, misogyny is to criticise men, but not really look at ways of, well, how do you work on the attitudinal change that is required for our society to evolve? And so for me at Auburn, it's really important that we start to have a conversation around what does it look like at a grassroots level to include men and allow women to have their safe space. And that's probably been one of the most um, thought provoking, difficult, most challenging aspects of what we do because it's not something that's visible. So when we win premierships, if we win premierships, we got knocked out one game short, damn it. Um, but when we do that, that's a, a visible outcome. People see that, people celebrate that you made prelim final. When you start a new team, people go, they have three teams now, they have this many players. We can quantify things and go, this is successful, but we don't measure success according to those social outcomes that are actually so important in shaping who we are and how we live. I'm really concerned uh, about that and I think that's why the school engagement and engagement of young girls and their families is probably the most challenging because you could deal with senior women. So they can go, come on their own, they can drive themselves, that's easy. But when you have parents with more than one child, they've got transport issues, financial obligations with all those children, they still have other commitments as well, it becomes more difficult. So what I'd like to see is 
more, more community football clubs, more communities engaged in those conversations where we don't demonise men, but we include them in that conversation and, and in whatever we're doing.